There's no objections to getting the show rolling. Yeah. And we'll do our best to yeah. have coherent, coherent, oh, coherent. Be coherent, <laughs> coherent <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> okay, camera's ready. Let's do this. All right. This is a special meeting of the Woodbridge Conservation Commission. It is June 25th, 2018. I'm going to start our meeting off with public comments. And we have no public comments. Next up is to review and approve the minutes of the May 17th regular meeting. Oh my gosh, I forgot to look at those. I was just busy looking at everything else. <laughs> there was a lot of material to go out <laughs> in addition to the minutes. Uh, That's the minutes right there. Those are not the minutes. I don't have them handy. Frank, did you happen to have a... Sometimes I know you print out the minutes. I don't have time. I don't have But I read them. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the May meeting. Yeah, I'm going to second it. They look pretty good to me. All right. Is there any discussion about the May minutes? I was here, so. Oh, boy. How are we going to do this? All right. All in favor of approving the May minutes? And those that were not here could vote. <laughs> I'm going to vote for you guys. <laughs> You're going to vote to take the pressure off for me? Yeah. And it just occurred to me. All right. And you're going to abstain, I'm guessing. Yeah, but then they won't pass, right? Can I amend them if I look at them and I don't like them? Uh, they'll pass because it's the majority of those present. Oh, those present? Okay, good. Then I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and it just occurred to me, we don't have a regular minute taker, so I'm going to jump in real quick and take some brief minutes for us. Next up on the agenda is what I originally thought was going to be a big discussion, but we've lost a number of the members tonight, so we don't have a full commission for this discussion. But the uh, agenda item is to discuss the proposed Agricultural Commission. Um, earlier this year, back in April, there was a Farmers Forum. That was in April uh, 18th, and it was a good turnout. I was there. Um, were you with that one? Mm -hmm. um, local farmers were there, representatives from the community were there, and it was a good discussion. And I circulated the results of that forum to all the members of the commission that are also available on the town's website. It's a pretty hefty document at uh, 36 pages. And I thought um, we would have a discussion among ourselves. We've been asked to weigh in, the Conservation Commission has been asked to weigh in on the pros and cons of an agricultural commission for the town of Woodbridge and uh, ultimately forming up some sort of an opinion. Um, but with lacking three of our seven members, uh, we can't have a, a solid opinion at this point, but we can well, certainly I, start I, a I can add, you know, uh, the missing members have all emailed in, and particularly Tracy, who says she does not want us to make a vote. On, on support or non-support without everybody being here. Right. I also concur that I think it would be great and I think it would will be eventually a unanimous decision. I think it will be much stronger if we do it that way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I think we'll all agree about it's that. It's such an important vote to do it without the entire commission. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But there are four of us here mm -hmm. and I feel as though we could have a, a, a short discussion and sure. maybe generate some ideas and questions that we could feed back. Well, and in particular, and we have Paul here tonight, and uh, Paul has been, uh, uh, in some way, the institutional memory for the uh, Citizens Commission for an Agricultural uh, Commission in favor. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, and if you guys have questions, uh, and I think Paul has some uh, presentation he can make, uh, which will be uh, important for all of us. All right. Uh, Paul, would you like to say a few words to kick off a little discussion up here? All right. The uh, uh, Paul DeCoster, 464 Amity Road. Uh, I'm a member of the ad hoc committee uh, to 
try to push for an agriculture commission in Woodbridge. And if I may say, Paul, we're calling ourselves the Citizens Committee. Citizens Commission, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's good. Okay, remember that. Yeah. Uh, and we have met for uh, several months uh, and proposed the Farmers Forum, which was held April 18th. Um, uh, in uh, first, uh, Selectman um, Cardozo has asked us to provide information to the extent we can on the economic uh, uh, benefits or the economic uh, facts concerning farm production in uh, in the town at this time. Uh, we have uh, two. Uh, sources of information. One of them is the Massaro Farm, which collects uh, meticulously uh, information concerning its production and the amount that is uh, delivered to the food banks. Uh, and we also have some information on um, the value of hay, because uh, that's pretty. There are, well, let me start by saying there are three or four producers at this time uh, in town. One of them is the Massaro Farm. One of them is Chris Sorensen on the Hubble Farm. And one of them is the vineyard, uh, Mr. Savino, uh, over on Ford Road. Uh, the the uh, uh, Sarah Shepherd uh, farm uh, is no is I don't believe it's producing much of anything at this time. So those would be the three sources of information. We have information on uh, on uh, Masaro Farm. We do not have information on the Savino Vineyard, and we do not have information at this point on on the Sorensen production. Uh, the uh, Masaro Farm has given us. Uh, its record of production for the last nine years. Let me pull my notes here. It's given to me by Katie Poole, who's the executive director, and she has given it to me uh, with. Uh, Gotta find it. That is available for production. Uh, shoot, I, I, I try to have copies of it. I get coming over here. And then bring it. Let's see. Did I got that? No, I got a request it. No, that's not it. Well, well, while well, you're looking yeah. for that, if I can, I want to submit. Uh, Go ahead. One of the uh, one of our commission had asked for an updated uh, list of farm properties for right. acreages, and so I'm okay. submitting that to you now. I got that today from uh, Jim Obama. All right, I have a copy of that as well. Uh, well, I made five copies of the damn thing, and I don't have them. <laughs> so uh, I can tell, but I can give you I can give you one piece of information, which is the most recent production. The uh, uh, the uh, for the last year, uh, the uh, the farm uh, distributed over five thousand pounds of food to the food banks. Uh, 
and it was 13% of their production. So their production was 77,000 pounds. Uh, the uh, you will, I'm sure you know that the production at the Masaro farm is of organic vegetables. So they have a retail value which is higher than uh, the non-organic vegetables. And the uh, their, uh, their uh, estimate is that those vegetables uh, have a value of approximately two to two and a half dollars a pound. So in other words, they're producing approximately 150, 160 thousand dollars worth of vegetables at, at, the, at the farm. That's on about nine to 10 acres of land. Now they have another five acres that they will eventually bring into production, bring them to a total of 15 acres. So you can estimate, I think, that they're going to have production, which is 150% of what they're doing now. Now, that the farm is uh, capitalized by a CSA, uh, which has a price, I believe, of $625 per member, which is contributed at the beginning of the year. That gives them their capital to work on, buy their food, buy their feed, their seed, their fertilizer, uh, maintain their equipment, pay their employees, and so forth. And the uh, so I think that the uh, you're talking about an operation which has two full-time employees and six or seven part-time employees, as well as a lot of volunteers. So all in all, it is I think a uh, a quite a successful uh, operation. The Savino Vineyard is 11 acres. I'm sure that his production per acre is probably higher, has a higher value than, than the Bizarro farm. He's, he's, he's uh, producing a, uh, uh, a more, a higher priced product. Uh, and I, can, I don't know anything about the, uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, the Chris Sorensen operation, except that he is running approximately 20 acres. Most of it is on borrowed, is on leased land, in back of the uh, in back of the Hubble uh, far, farm stand. Um, I think he I think he has he employs at least six or seven people, including his son, and himself. Uh, and he has told me that every, practically everything they produce they sell right at the farm stand. So he has, so I think he has a fairly successful operation as well. The uh, the other production that's going on in town is is uh, land that is being farmed for hay, and the uh, uh, one of the examples of it is the ten acres of land at the Fitzgerald property that is being farmed by Keith uh, 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 Arnold uh, to feed his cattle. Uh, now the uh, the. Normal rule of thumb, I don't have information directly from Arnold, we probably should get it from him, and we should, I guess. But the normal rule of thumb is he gets 100, acre, 100 bales per, per acre. Uh, the second cut is more valuable than the first cut. First cut is at $7, $7 plus a, a bale, and the second cut is higher at around $8 a bale. So, if you estimate that on the acreage he is he is uh, uh, he is farming, uh, he has uh, he's do, he's doing about twenty two thousand dollars an acre. That is higher than the Masaro farm uh, by some amount, but pretty close. Uh, so I think you're talking about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars an acre for for hay and and animal feed and for. Uh, and for uh, organic vegetables sold either through a CSA or through uh, farmers markets and so forth. So the answer is nobody is getting rich farming. Uh, and as uh, Katie Poole has pointed out to me, uh, these, these uh, farms are all dependent in part on working outside in the winter time and so forth for third parties. Uh, so I don't know that they're all making a living in farming, but they're making but they're making money, and they're they're they are uh, employing people, uh, and we think that uh, 
that is something is beneficial to the to the uh, to the community. The uh, uh, we we met uh, with the Economic Development Commission I think last week uh, or a week ago, uh, and one of the commissioners uh, was very anxious to find out what this would do about, for, uh, about taxable revenue for the farm, for the uh, town. And I think the short answer to that is there would be no necessarily additional revenue to the town from the form of taxes uh, because farm agriculture community, uh, agriculture property is taxed, I think, at a lower rate uh, than commercial property. And the agricultural property uh, uh, except for the 10 or so acres that is farmed by Luciani down in the flats, is all in, in uh, land that is zoned residential. Uh, no commercial acre, no commercial property could come up here unless you change the zoning. So I don't see that there's going to be a tremendous change in the tax benefit and the tax rolls as a result of this, but it will produce uh, on land that is now fallow, most of it, and uh, I think that uh, it will produce food, which is, of course, my reason for being a member of the uh, of the Citizens Commission. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to produce food, and I'd like, frankly, I'd like some of the food to go to the go to the food banks. Uh, now, uh, I can produce the meticulous memorandum that Katie sent to me, and I will do that, and you can put it on the record. Uh, and I have some information from Jim Urbano on the uh, on the hay, and I'll produce uh, I'll produce that for the record as well. And you can see the uh, as as uh, Leland has pointed out, you can see the inventory of, of farmland in town. The town has approximately 50 acres of land that is leased uh, to various uh, participants. Uh, uh, including Keith Arnold, who now has the acreage uh, at the Fitzgerald that is not allocated for community gardens. Uh, the Zwick farm uh, has Mr. Chris, who is, uh, who is haying four or five acres there, uh, etc. The, uh, uh, the, uh, but the problem, uh, there is one uh, piece of land that I want to mention, and that is the six to eight acres that are, is across the street from the Darling House. That is owned by the town and is leased to, uh, to uh, Chris Sorensen. The problem with these leases is that they are one-year leases and the farmers cannot afford to put the capital into these, into these properties uh, to full, bring them to full production if they're, if they're going to, if they're, they're only going to be there for a year. So uh, one of the suggestions that I think we have is that the board, the town, change its policy with respect to these properties so that farmers can go on the land for, with leases that are longer than a year, hopefully five years or longer. That gives them the incentive to raise the capital to produce them, to bring them into full production. The, uh, the uh, caretaker at the... Uh, at the Darling House uh, for the Historical Society, uh, Ethan Schneider, is uh, producing on approximately three quarters of an acre of land at the Darling House and another quarter or half an acre at the, at the Polk House down the road. Uh, he has tried several, on several occasions to raise money by grants to put a well in there so that he can uh, improve the, his acre, he, the amount of acreage that he farms. He has gotten nowhere, and he says the reason is uh, that, he can only, that he's only there for a year. His lease as a Darling House uh, is up, I think, in another year, and he'll have to go through the, going to the town again and the historical society to go on for another two years. So the idea is to get them on land uh, at, a longer, uh, at a longer lease, so the, and to help them uh, raise capital so that they can improve the property. Uh, I think if we do that, we're going to get more, more production here, and I think that will be beneficial to the town. Bring more jobs, 
bringing local food and uh, I think a beneficial even though we're not going to re be raising any more tax income but uh, uh, it'll be beneficial to us I, um, I understand some grants are only available if, if the town has an agricultural committee is that correct uh, the the uh, at the farmers forum uh, one of the speakers uh, pointed out that under the state law the state has grants available there there are two there are two sources of government money uh, for farmers one is the federal uh, department of agriculture uh, and the other is the state uh, the state law now uh, favors uh, agriculture commissions because it says uh, we will only deal uh, with this one program that provides grants if the agriculture commission uh, supports it uh, there are something like 40 agriculture commissions in the uh, in the state at this point, and there are more. If that if that law stays stays in place and there's money there, well, you'll see more of them coming into into into. So that would be and, an and, and, right, there, there, there are cer certain uh, funding sources yeah. that are only available if you have an agriculture. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. That's, that's that was my point. Now that doesn't mean it can't be a joint commission, yep. right? It can be a joint conservation and agricultural commission, but you need to have. Uh, a specific commission dedicated to agriculture. And to the right. grant yeah, that was mentioned yeah. at that farmers forum, um, the town did follow up, Sheila and the town followed up with the grant funder, the state. Um, and while they do appreciate having an agricultural commission, it's not required for the application to be made. Well, okay. it depends on what it is, because in, in particular, the grants that are allowed for converting uh, fallow uh, land that is no longer farmed back to farmland, that is actually a requirement. For a town? Because that also, yeah. oh, I also need to make sure that the grants that we're talking about are available to municipalities, because some of them are available only to private individuals. Well, so in, we need so, a little more investigation, so. but that was my understanding at the time. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, by the way, that, you know, related to, and a lot of what uh, Paul's been addressing is uh, is related to the EDC meeting, the Economic Development Commission, uh, but uh, one of the responses is that numerous cost of community services studies confirm that, quote, farmland and other open space generate more public revenue than they require in public services, end of quote. Yeah, and that's a statement that's, that's been a good point. mentioned a lot yeah. because you're not supporting families and people enjoy the, the open space. I think the grants is yeah, probably the question. So, yeah. Paul, can I ask you? So, sure. um, and that needs more research. Yeah. I, what, the sorry. grants, I think that's the most yes. compelling argument for an agricultural commission, and so I think we'd want as much data on that about why, you know, what. Does it have to be standalone? What kind of grants are they? All that information. So actually, and that's related to that, what is the most compelling argument, in your opinion, to have an, a separate agricultural commission uh, from a conservation commission? Well, number one, I think the conservation commission has plenty to do already. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, there are certain specific things that you can that uh, can be done uh, by an agriculture commission that you might not be able to do. For example, you've got to go to, you've got to go to the farmers and find out what they what they need. That's very important. At the farmers forum, one of the things that did not happen was we didn't hear hear from any farmers. <laughs> uh, I think it's important to, to talk to them. We know, for example, that Savino would like to get a grant to put fencing around his property to keep the deer out. Uh, that's probably a thirty or forty thousand uh, dollar job. The uh, I know that the Masaro farm mm. got money from the federal government to do that. That's where the, that's where they raised the money for the for the fencing that is there now. The uh, uh, Ethan Schneider would like to have would like to drill a well, and uh, that that well that's over on the property next to the barn across the street from the Darling House would service uh, six to eight acres. The uh, uh, these people need capital resources, and uh, an agriculture commission or, or a, a commission that is dedicated, is, whose first priority is to uh, 
uh, work on these things uh, would uh, try to be, become uh, familiar with the uh, sources available for funding, have a liaison with them, and try to introduce farmers to them and to prepare grant if applications. Uh, the, uh, uh, there are other uh, uh, things that a farm commission can do. For example, it can, it can run uh, seminars to educate farmers on the best products to, to, uh, to plant. Uh, it can it can uh, uh, it can investigate what better ways to uh, merchandise the product. Uh, I know that there was some uh, discussion at the farm forum about uh, about uh, farmers markets. Some of them are better than others. Uh, the uh, uh, we were, we bought some uh, pro we bought some seedlings at the Vayuso farm in Hamden. Uh, not in Hamden, I'm sorry, in Brantford uh, this year, and we talked to one of the guys who works has worked there for 30 years. He said that the Vayuso farm was for many years a celery growing operation, and at the, at the, after the end of the World War II, the best half of their property was taken for Route 95. Uh, so they're now stuck in a small, small location uh, with very nice, uh, uh, with I see something like 10 acres uh, of uh, uh, overly well, uh, well watered land right next to them, black, black earth. But he said they can't grow tomatoes on it. Uh, he said, but what saved the, the Vayusos is that they went into the, the went into the uh, into the nursery business, and they are now profitable and running into the third or fourth generation. Uh, the uh, but they uh, they did it because uh, they they were they're still there because they were able to change and uh, adapt to uh, to. Uh, uh, to times they moved on. And I think that's something that the Agriculture Commission can help them with. I think, the, uh, I think it is important for, the, uh, for this to be done as a separate operation, so that, uh, uh, or, or at least to be done so that people will pay attention to it. Uh, because if you don't, uh, you're, you're, you end up with people like Sarah Shepard who's sitting there not knowing what the hell to do with uh, 15 acres of land. Well, could, could I ask you if you have a, a group of people that are willing to serve on the commission? If it's if it, uh, if it's, uh, well, uh, we haven't discussed have uh, who would serve on the commission, but certainly, some of the people who serve on the commission should be farmers. Sure, I mean they know what the hell they want, right? Uh, and the uh, and I think there are other people uh, in town who are tied into farming. Uh, the uh, lock, sock, and barrel people, for example, uh, and there are other people who are suppliers to farmers. They should be consulted, um, and I think uh, you then you have uh, uh, people uh, who are interested in agriculture generally. Uh, so I think there there uh, there will be plenty of people who I think who would be able, willing to serve on such a commission. I think what's interesting, too, is if you look at this uh, Citizens Commission that's... Yeah, I was just wondering how well formed it is yet. If you have well, a real group, then they so want to come on. What's to, very uh, interesting is you have um, a number of young people that, I mean, out of the, what, 34 people we have in this uh, Citizens Commission, mm -hmm. 11, of them, 11 of them are under the age of 30. And uh, what I love about this is that uh, it, the difference to me between a conservation commission and an ag commission is an ag commission is a lot of it's, 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 it's economically based, it's business based, it's not conservation of land alone, right? And so when one of the things we, we really want to do here in Woodbridge is we want to retain the young. We want young people coming here. So how do we get young people? And when we have 11 people out of 34 in this commission, uh, this this committee that actually live here, went to high school here, and want to farm here. That's great. And 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 the the amazing thing is, is 
in the 60s, all the farms went out of business, the dairy farms and all the rest sure. of it, because of the stone walls and because of the small size of the plots, and they couldn't do big, big farming. And so now we have all these micro farms that are setting up, and on two acres of land, they can make a profit. They can have a CSA. And uh, I just think it's really exciting, the idea that we can um, get you know a, a commission together that will... Uh, form something that could be historically what Woodbridge did, be the breadbasket to New Haven, right? And so I, 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 I'm so excited in terms of land use, in terms of lack of, in terms of not needing the typical resources, resources of residential land use, um, and, and bringing back the fallow land, which is very much in, in, in tune with the conservation development plan. If you, if you look at the list of, you know, what are the things we like most about Woodbridge? We love the open, the open space. We love the, you know, and you can't have open space without having, uh, you know, the hand of farming. You, open space costs money. And so if Absolutely. those are farmers who are making money, and, and the, the, the other thing is tourist destinations bringing people to Woodbridge. The most exciting thing to me in the last Massaro Farm event I went to is that I would say 60% of the people there were not from Woodbridge. They were coming here from Fairfield County right. and from other areas to say, wow, this is a really cool event. And so th the other side of this is, is, is if we can preserve the farmland through, uh, for, through developing uh, good economic resources for farming and bringing people to Woodbridge, that's going to help our real estate values. People are, you know, people are going to want to come here and live here. Uh, I have a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, here we go. Forgetting the merits, I think there are good merits, with your knowledge of the 40 towns that have both an Ag Commission and a Conservation Commission, um, are you aware of any Issues, or what would the issues be that the two would maybe not necessarily agree on something that came forward? I'm not sure that that uh, there are any. I know I know that uh, the, one of the fellows who spoke at the farm at the farmers forum uh, works at the Chickarelli farm in Norford. They have a they have an agriculture commission, and. Uh, he, I think, took the position that uh, that they uh, that they, the the fact that they can mm -hmm. they can emphasize on this one subject, emphasize this one subject in their commission, is, is helpful. Uh, now, obviously, uh, if the people on this commission wanted to spend the time, uh, they could do the same thing, but the that would require them to. Uh, become involved pretty pretty closely with the farmers, with the people who own the land, with the uh, sources of funding, uh, with the uh, merchandising of the property of the of the products, and so forth. This is a, this is a this is a fairly sizable a, a enterprise. It seems to me. I guess I was thinking even in terms of. Like recreation versus farming, does that ever come up? Or is there? A, I'm sorry. Like you know, we preserve land, and one of the things that people talk about is they want to preserve land for recreation. And now, someone we may want to preserve something to build a farm. Does that ever create conflict? There, it's too well, new to I, know. Well, I don't. I don't know. I can tell you this. One I think of the places preservation of, of open land, whether it be farmland or, or recreation, is right. kind of yeah. Well, I, I was trying to yeah. you know see where if if it, could there be a conflict and where well, would that I, be? Well, I can tell you one thing. One place, Either way. right right now, and that is uh, the the country club of Woodbridge. They got 150 acres of land there. Uh, at least 60 percent of it has is prime uh, agricultural land. Now. I don't know what's going to happen to the place, but if we if we could get let's say fifteen of those acres, three of the uh, three of the fairways with those with those uh, nice uh, paths, and we say okay, we we'll put a farmer on there. Uh, I think you see a hell of a lot of food come out of there. Now. If you've got all the plans for the thing, okay, we have to, you have, that has to be decided by 
by the town, by the board of selectmen, by the voters. But the, I'm saying that is one area that, that uh, can be used. Now, there, there are some places, like the Shepherd Farm, where you've got 15 acres, maybe a little more, uh, which, uh, where, they, where they ran a, a herd of cattle there. And that can be put right into, right into vegetable production, as far as I can see. So that is, that is not, uh, that, that, that's not going to bother anybody. I think one of the things that I've seen in looking at this, and I've, I've been trying to come up with an answer to that same question, um, I think there's sort of two areas. And one is, how do conservation commissions define uh, the conservation of land? Mm -hmm. And if that means that no humans can be on that land, Right? I mean, there are many definitions. Right. You know, some people believe, as, as in, in Russia, that much of their land that's conserved, no human interaction is allowed, right? So where do you fall in terms of defining what conserv conserved mm -hmm. land means? Sure. So that's one issue. The second issue is agriculture is a business, mm -hmm. right? And so the definition of how do you when you're when you if, if your open space land is farm then you know what are the regulations on that and so a an agriculture commission would tend to be more uh, on the line of we want to maximize the profit the farmer can make right mm -hmm. whereas the conservation commission is more going to be on you know we we want the least impact on the land if that's our definition uh, so that's one of the things I think we need to look at in the future, just as a conservation commission. H how do we define what, and we are, we are it, it, I'm new here, but we're very much into the public use of our open lands and our forests, walking trails. We want people in our land. We want, we, we want to see use of it, but that's not what everybody's idea of conservation is. I have a little concern about the market. You know, I'm looking at uh, the topic of the Woodbridge Farm Market. Is really is there enough market for the for the produce or for the products that are going to be uh, produced by the farm the farms? And so, Frank, I will say if you listen to the farm. No, I did. I did listen to Paul. Yeah. But still there. No, no. But when at the forum, hmm. a lot of the farmers that got up and spoke said, you know, the Woodbridge Farmers Market doesn't do much for them. It's more money than it makes for them. And that there are farmers markets farmers. everywhere, That's and the and that the ones that are really successful are the ones that draw a lot of people there, which doesn't mean we can't develop a better farmers market here that is more that is a tourist destination. But right now, the farmers we heard that spoke said the one we're doing isn't working for them. Right, right. That's true. <laughs> this particular one, yeah. But there, are, but there are plenty of them that are working very satisfactorily. The one in Milford. It's going great guns. Uh, I said, maybe, I maybe talked to you some uh, people, and they said they had twenty-two. They had twelve tables over there. That's where, that's the place where they sell all their stuff. So that's like they make during the season. Kind of rope the conversation back in a little bit because I know you had more questions. I've got some as well. I guess it was even. I want. Why don't you make your question? Ask your question. Okay, mine, mine are much more pragmatic okay. at the moment. Um, okay. In the updated list of the farms here, right. I just wanted to be clear what definition was used for a farm. Because I know the state has their definition of what a farm is. Was that used in the creation of this list? Do you know, Paul? Well, I think I think that uh, all of these places. So there, there are some that are that are dormant. And they say they're dormant, uh, but the ones that are that are that are the, uh, the others, for example, the uh, you have to go down the list. The uh, uh, the Hitchcock place on Baldwin Road is a real farm. Now that is mostly in Derby, but the but the land trust is uh, is trying to get a conservation easement on it, mm -hmm. and the and the state has already agreed to put up the money to buy the land. That's 80 acres. That will definitely be a farm. Yes. Now, what kind of farming they do on there is something is another question. Uh, if uh, Hein gets on there, he'll he'll use that to mostly for hay. But uh, what I'm hoping is that some will be put into vegetable production and and fruit production. Okay. The so uh, fair enough. In this list, 
it's a combination list of uh, uh, lands that are identified that could be yeah, fit right. the definition right. and lands that are actually used Correct. that follow the definition. Okay. Right. I think it's important to have that yeah. on the on this right. document right. indicating what was what criteria was used. Perhaps identify which one. Perhaps identify which one. It says what it includes, but it doesn't say the criteria. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Correct. Um, because by the state's criteria, I've got. Well, in the past years, I had six beehives on my property. And by state criteria, I'm a farm, even right. though I'm 1.3 acres. I've got Well, and I beehives. would say, so I think that's. As a, as a committee, what we tried to do is, amongst us, try and include as much as we could that fit the state definition. And there's probably a lot more, which is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's important to have on here, especially when we start getting into the right the criteria. technical. I mean, it's it's good to have the potential listed there, but it's also I think just as important to make sure we're all talking about the well the the reality on the ground. The so we're all are more or less the same terms. For, Well, for example, in Masaro Farm, he says this thing says fifty-seven acres. We know, I know that they got they got ten acres they're working on now. They're going to go do another five, so they got fifteen acres. The rest is woods, and woods and swamp. No, but I like your idea at the beginning of that document to state the definition. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. So that was one of my questions. Um, another one is uh, where in the process are things? Um, this this afternoon I spoke with uh, Sheila at the town. Um, and I didn't realize that the ordinance committee had not met yet. Yeah, I think it's happening right, tomorrow yeah. night. Correct. Um, so and let's I, ask Mika that question. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then in, in com combination with that, um, is there a draft of an ordinance for a commission written specific to Woodbridge? Because what we've seen so far is the generalized. This is a template that could be used. We haven't seen anything specific to Woodbridge yet, and I'm wondering if that's been presented or developed by the the group. Well, we've written several drafts, but the the uh, the one that the template that was that finally emerged here uh, is the uh, uh, is this one, which I can give you. Is that's, that the one that's, that, the, that's the latest one I have. Is that the one that um, I think we had got a copy of? Uh, it was based on Oxford, the model ordinance yeah. to adopt an agricultural. Uh, I think it's the model ordinance. Yes, I think it's a model ordinance. Correct. Yep. Yep. It's based on on uh, on at least one or two of the uh, commissions that have already been organized. Yeah, that one had mentioned it was. In the yes. footnotes, it was modeled on the Oxford. I was That's just wondering correct. if there was one that was written specific to Woodbridge yet. It just sounds like not quite yet. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I think, I think <laughs> this is, we, we, we would recommend that something like this be uh, be used uh, if you want to get more specific about certain uh, r real estate or, or something like that. Yeah, we could put it in there. But the uh, basically. Uh, uh, and then some of these, by the way, are are very elaborate. <laughs> uh, but the uh, this is sort of a general one. Okay. Right. Well, Jason, so why would you and your six beehives that fit the definition of farm need an agricultural commission? Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, because I don't sell to the public, I do the beehives for my own my own honey consumption, and because I like the bees. Uh -huh. yeah. Are we distinguishing between those on this list, like people like Jason versus? Yeah, I guess that's part of my question. Like how big is this list really? Well, I think what's interesting is that if we, this list is just a compilation of now, uh, based on the you know citizens commission, and I think it'd be really exciting. You know, the more we develop this, it, it, you know, if in fact. You know, we found out, they, I call them micro-farmers, there are <laughs> micro-farmers all over the place. I mean, that could be a very exciting thing acre. for us. Mm -hmm. And what would the commission do? I don't, um, I'm not disputing the need to promote this, but why, I guess, again, getting to the merits of well, why the commission? I can't, I mean, I look at it as, how do we make Woodbridge, uh, how do we make this a more exciting place to live than North Haven or Guilford or, and I think one of the ways we can do this, and one of the things that uh, in Northford, the fellow that presented to us showed, is you know their map of farming and how 
they they you know the commission developed all these things where they were uh, developing tourism and people wanted to come to northward to and they had this trail of farms they could go to uh, vineyards whatever they were and and then that creates excitement by you know people want to live here or be here uh, so I think that's an important impact of what an agricultural commission could do here how do you think you can um, get more town buy-in because everyone has and I and we're very fragmented here right and I think it was a big disappointment for me with the town is the fragmentation I wish we could unite a little better and we think about the country club is the best example in that survey and the most anyone could agree on anything was like 39 percent or something right so how do we look at our demographic and say what would be something that would be, a lot of people would feel passionate about like how what would apply to everyone in the town and so here's something I will state and that is that we had this wonderful group of young men and women uh, excited about this Ag Commission and excited about people getting behind farming. And they, none of them are here tonight. And part of the reason is they feel they've been beaten down by the, by the public process. Right, mm -hmm. and that you know the economic development. All they they, they want to be farmers. They want to do mushrooms. They want to do this. They want to do, and they they they're they're eager, and they're twenty five years old, and they feel like the the government process has suddenly beaten them down, and they're not we're not interested. We're questioning them on all these things of mm -hmm. you know, do you have a business plan? Do you have this? Do you have that? They want to farm, and they want to be here in Woodbridge, and I say we should encourage these kids. That's, I think, one of the most important things we could do. And you asked about the question, who would be on this commission? I would love to see at least half of this commission be, you know, uh, people mm -hmm. like Troy Sorensen, who are fourth generation farmers, and, and young people like my son, who are first generation farmers, you know, who are excited about startup businesses in agriculture in Woodbridge. So, is this. I'm just kind of I'm using up your time. I'll try to go quickly. <laughs> I wasn't at the forum. So I read an article in the Hartford Current like eight years ago that Woodbridge has is like the most educated town in Connecticut. We have more college degrees and graduate degrees than any other town. So that tells us a lot about the people who live here, right? And education is important. So how can we tie farming into education to get town buy-in? All right, I mean, so look you, at the, the, you, young, you know, there's the, STEM, the young farmer of the year right. in Bethany. Who had that terrible disaster with the tornado? Oh, yeah. Here he, he has a degree from Cornell, he has a degree from UConn, and he's taking a what a fifth generation farm and turning it into a viable business and a tourist destination. But more than that, I'm saying that even if someone doesn't want to be a farmer, if you can create an educational hub with all the there's you know there's the science, technology, engineering, planning, design, all these things are going to farming. So how can Woodbridge create something? I don't like what I feel brains over here, but create something, <laughs> you know, I, that's just my... That's a great idea. Right. Yeah. Um, and you might get buy-in from across groups. I'm just going to throw out the hypothetical question that we've all raised in the past, but can the role of the Agricultural Commission be filled in current capacities? For example, could it be a subcommittee from the Conservation Commission with uh, members from the current citizen committee um, to fit the needs of what's being asked. Are there sufficient farms in town to support a whole commission? Uh, should the number of farms in town be the factor, determining factor of whether a commission should be formed or not? And I'm putting these questions out there. No, I just think it's as, a great uh, question, but so as more. Amy Morella said at the Farmers Forum when whatever 50 or more people were there uh, she said, well, I haven't seen this many people, you know, from a town doing anything that wasn't complaining. And so she said, if you have this many people that are inter interested, have at it. You know, if you, and how hard is, is it to fill commissions? And are there really <laughs> all these people that want to be involved in this agricultural commission? Let's, let's do it. All right. So to that point, <laughs> I'm going to bring up some of the, the, the downside to, to commissions. Um, in relation to a, a letter to the editor that was written against the Masaro farm recently. Um, I know Jim wrote that letter, um, and um, 
it was very negative against the Masara farm, and the farm is trying to improve itself, to expand its economic viability, to improve public access and safety on the farm. Um, it, it would be a shame if an agricultural commission would have people and personalities that would then try to squash the ambition and expansion of a farm to raise itself up. I don't see so, that at all. I, th I think that's, that's so, and that's the job of our selectmen and our, our, our you know, to, to choose the right people to be on the commission, but I cannot imagine that there would be, uh, I'm not aware of what you're referring to, but I cannot imagine that in any way that if there was a proper commission that it would be in any way adversarial to existing farms. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. I would hope not. Um, yeah. But this particular letter was against the parking area at Masaro, and it's something that Masaro, I was a prior board member, I know the need of it um, for safety and the availability of parking spaces because people end up parking on a very busy street instead of uh, on the so I think that's the exactly something that would be the duty of a, a, an agricultural commission to, you know, to deal with issues like that. Right. The, the, but the contention is it's considered prime agricultural farmland that you're putting a parking lot on. I wouldn't. I would like to not see a commission get in the way of a farm trying to expand itself, make it safer, increase its capacity and access that's to the public. So. Parking is a big issue. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. it's, it's very big. Yeah. Cars are a big issue. Wants land. <laughs> yeah, we don't really have any very much zoning related to farming, do we? Here in town, mm -hmm. who who can farm and who can have farm animals? And with this, I believe the only thing we have, and you know better than I do, but that as of right, if you have five or more acres, you can be a farm. That's uh, the only thing I'm really aware of. Is that correct? Would this in, commission be looking to promote changing that at all? Changing, creating new... I think one of the exciting things is about the commission is we don't know what they would do, but they would be 100% pro-farming, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you asked a, a good question. How would that conflict with what we do as a conservation commission? There are areas that that could maybe conflict with, in, in particular with, you know, yes, if, if there are people that believe that wetlands, you know, are untouchable, um, well, farming trumps wetland uh, regulations. So that could be an area where the two commissions didn't really, you know, jive. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I had down here was information on the darling production. I know, Paula, you'd come up with some info about um, Sorensen Massaro and the vineyard. Um, darling is also one of the small well, dar farms darling, that he actually... Darling is about, is about, a, uh, is about an acre, uh, three-quarters of an acre, uh, right on the Darling property itself. Uh, Ethan Schneider uh, has... Uh, uh, a lease on two acres uh, north of the Darling property that is owned by the town. He's sharing that with Sarah Shepherd. Uh, I don't know what they're doing on there. I think Shepherd Ethan would like to expand, uh, uh, and uh, he has a CSA started. I don't know how successful it is, but you know, I know that he has uh, that he's uh, selling, and he's also selling at the farmers markets. Uh, and he's waiting on tables on, on, at, uh, on this, in, this, in the wintertime. So he's making, he's making a living there. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, real, uh, the real secret to uh, the Darling House is across the street. If you, if you had, if a guy got to get hold of that six or eight acres and, and improve it, you would then have right there on that one property that was his town land by the way uh probably six seven eight acres and he could make a living on that but i think the other side too an ag commission could help with small business administration for young farmers uh not just resources economic resources to keep them here uh but um you know help with business acumen you know what do you need to do and i, I one of the Questions. I think, Mika, you were there 
um, at the first presentation to the Economic Development Commission, and they said, well, you know, they said, uh, can you, uh, this was a, a presentation that my son and Will Conway, both graduates of Amity High School, were making to do shiitake farming on my property. And they said, well, could we see your, uh, you know, business plan? And uh, it's sort of, here's two 25-year-old guys who want to grow mushrooms. Uh, and no, they didn't have a business plan. Yeah. How would that work, though, with a business advising? Because you, as a commissioner, you're supposed to be thinking about the town as a whole. I mean, you're you maybe promoting something individually for the greater good of the town, and then there might be times when there's a conflict. I mean, it sounds like that's a difficult role for a commission. Well, I think that's what, like an economic development commission, is that, you know, if you're going to develop business, you're, you're going to have some conflicts. There are going to be people that don't want you developing the business where you want to develop <laughs> business. And I think that's something, that's how a town runs. There's there's nothing consistent. But you're developing, the, in the economic development, you're developing a business with the idea of the town as a whole, where, I mean, what you're talking about advising business sounds more like a nonprofit, like you want to have a nonprofit that would help promote farmers and to develop their plan. And it sounds different than a commission. Mission. Well, no, I think one of the things a commission can do is find the resources for small business administration that farmers could utilize. They might find grants uh, where farmers could, you know, uh, get uh, education in these areas. Mm -hmm. The big thing is to, is to have a group that, whose sole purpose is to promote agriculture. That's it. You do that. The the land is here. I think there's enough land here to make a significant uh, dent in uh, in food production and uh, and employ people uh, who want to get into farming. And there are a lot of people who like to get get into farming. And uh, the uh, uh, and I think the state is in favor of that. They they are they're putting. Uh, 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 let's see, uh, almost a million dollars into the into the Baldwin Road farm. So they they want they want farming to be here, and the land is here. And uh, I think there are people willing to do the farming. The idea is to give them is to help them along. Or do things. If, the farmers are not good at writing grant applications. <laughs> at least the ones I've met. And so you need to do that, and you need to find resources for them, capital and uh, and and education, information on what to, what to plant and so forth. So that's all that kind of stuff. I think it requires uh, people who are willing to uh, buckle down and find and find the fa the the answers to these questions. And uh, my view of the, com of the Cons Conservation Commission is you've got, you got a lot of other things to do. <laughs> you know, like, so you wanted to, I th so I, I, in answer to, uh, to Jason's question, could this be a s subsection of the co Conservation Commission? I suppose it could, sure. In uh, Jones, one of the speakers at the uh, forum, uh, runs a big operation in, in, uh, in uh, Shelton, uh, he said their operation is run through the through the Conservation Commission. He said, but look, you've got five guys on the commission who are basically farmers. So they uh, that's their primary objective, to save the farmland and improve it. All right. I'm going to see if there's any last-minute questions. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. You talked out. Because <laughs> we are going to have more discussion about oh, yeah. this at our next well, meeting yeah. as well. So yeah. you, need, yeah. you need to get the yeah. I think we'll yeah. try. Yeah. I think we'll yeah. find yeah. ourselves yeah. repeating yeah. the yeah. 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 one point to say. We well. should be... Uh, uh, I was just made. I was just made aware this evening that the town is putting together a farm survey with the assistance of some students at the Amity High School. Um, and I believe Sheila had mentioned this will be going out later this year. Good. It's based somewhat upon the North Branford, um, their little brochure about their farms in yep. town. Yeah. Um, so I think North Branford has some huge farms yeah. also. I, I, I well, they, 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 well, they have, they have a big farming operation in North Branford, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm hoping yeah, that. Farming can do it. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, maybe this. Uh, citizens Committee can help with 
filling out some of the questions in that survey to make sure it's comprehensive. Yes, yeah, um, I will. Some answers, right? I am going to send a copy of this around to the members on this Good. commission. Yeah. Um, to see if there are questions that we would like included in the I survey as like well. To see that. Um, so I just got this right at the beginning of the meeting, so I'll get a copy of it to, to everybody for us to consider at our next meeting. Okay. Paul, thank you for coming out. Sure. Right. Your passion for farms and giving food to those in need is admirable. Could I get one quick, um, if I make, if you don't mind, can you tell us how the process works? What, where are we in the process? Sure. Okay. Go for it, Mika. Uh, we have, this is, tomorrow will be the first time the aggregation, the Agricultural Commission uh, proposal will be in front of the ordinance committee. So there's been no discussion on it. There's been no review on it. There is no documentation that's been specific to Woodbridge on it. That will be part of the process. Tomorrow is the first day that it will be on there. I don't expect that there will be a vote on it tomorrow because of that, because of the information and because we're because the ordinance works very specifically and very, very appropriately off of the recommendations and input from the other commissions that are that are tied to whatever it is that comes up before us, as well as the people themselves. And so uh, tomorrow is the first time we'll be discussing it. Um, it is, as Leland said, very exciting in terms of the amount of, of uh, enthusiasm and positive, positive uh, input from the people who are engaged. Um, and really what comes before the Ordinance commission, Committee is very specifically the Agricultural Commission, not farming, not everything else that's really, really great and everybody wants to see and we're all very enthusiastic for. It's really just a matter of what comes before the Ordinance Commission is, do we need, do we want to pursue and go forward with an Agricultural Commission or is there another option in a way to, um, there's a lot of people who are involved in this, so we want to listen to the folks who are involved in it and who are, who are looking to, to, to make the difference for the agricultural community, and we want to see what ideas we can foster and what the best way to approach that is. If that is an agricultural commission, then we want to move forward with that. But tomorrow, tomorrow really starts the process, as opposed to, I think some folks are thinking that that's where a decision is made. No, it's just, it's just really beginning tomorrow, now that we have the information. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. You're Thank you. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you. thank you, Paul. So we are down to <laughs> two more agenda items. Uh, they, they should be pretty quick. Um, the first one is the update on our 2018 trail walks. We do have a trail walk coming up. We do. Uh, July 7th, right? Saturday, July That's 7th. That's correct. Yeah. At 10? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yeah. And uh, Lauren and Frank are going to be taking this one on. A joint walk. Ron Walters is going to help for the uh, water company. All right, and this is at. Um, oh, good. This is start at. Oh, what's the name it's of that? Ferry Road. It's Ferry Road. It's Ferry Road off Morris Road. And there's a dam over there by that lake. What's the, is there a specific name to the? They do what? To the dam and the lake that we're going to. Oh, Ferry Park. We're going to go to Ferry. It's Ferry Falls. Well, we'll walk over to Sperry Falls. We'll walk over to Sperry Falls. Oh, we'll, we'll, first we'll walk to the dam by uh, Lake Chamberlain. And Chamberlain, then, thank you. Yeah, we'll do, <laughs> first we go to the dam, and then we go to Sperry Falls, yeah. Right. So it's about an hour, an hour. Yeah, and it's, it's the same walk we did last year. Yeah. It was yeah. well attended. It was, it was well received. Fairly easy walk. Um, mm -hmm. I was advised today that we need to notify wa the Water Authority that they should mow, because apparently the path that we had walked last year has now got knee-high grasses everywhere, and with the prevalence of ticks and tick-borne diseases, we want to get that cut down, if at all possible. Okay. When we had walked it last year, they had recently mowed, like within a, a week or so, because the grass was still ankle-ish. All right, I'll, I'll ask Brian how that is. I mean, he's, he's going to be kind of leading the walk like he did last, last yeah, year. Yeah, so it long. might be just the timing. It might be that... Yeah. You're like a putting green, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really sure. <laughs> that's right. Um, and then Sheila shared these images with the commission members yeah, the damage yes. from the recent uh, microbursts of tornadoes that came through hit what Bethany really bad, but um, Broken it rock. hit Sperry Falls. There's some big trees down in the falls. And it hit, it hit damaged the millstone. Well, the damage on the millstone at Sperry Park is from people putting campfires. That's in not, yeah, that's not from um, the... Uh, and the heating and cooling of yeah, the Yeah, that's not from the... This caused uh, the millstone to crack, and um, Sheila wondered, what should we do? 
So it is town property. It's town owned. There is a Sperry Park committee dedicated to maintaining the park. Should I at least have a, a sign there? This is a historic monument. Please right. do not destroy it. Uh, I mean, that, that might help. My thought on the millstone would be to put a band, a metal band, yeah, around it to keep it from sort, yeah. continuing to crumble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you hate to have to do that, but... Nature, nature takes its course. Won't make the comment. They're using it for a fire. Yeah. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's coming up. That's our next trail walk in July. Chairman's report. Uh, one of them was this very park and the millstone. Uh, I also wanted to make the commission members aware that one of the properties that's on our open space plan, 20 Blue Trail, is apparently coming up for sale. Um, we don't have any more specifics about it, it other than what it is. It's 36 acres. It abuts town-owned property. It also abuts uh, water authority and land trust property. So to get an idea of where it is, if you know where the shepherd's farm is, or you do yeah. know where the cement kilns or the quarry oh, yeah. is. Yeah, know where the we know where shepherd's is. Yeah. It's, if you walk up the hill beyond, beyond shepherd's, you go up around the power line area. It's mm -hmm. up in that up general. In that it's behind the, uh, the um, cement kiln? Yeah, yeah, up the hill. And that's privately owned? There is 30... I'm looking up at the notes here. 36 acres really? back there. Yeah. And how is it accessible? Uh, well, it you could walk on the power lines. There's the blue. No, I mean, how would you get there if you bought the property? Oh, it does go at the end of Blue Trail Drive. There's a road called Blue oh. Trail Drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, there is an entrance. No, there's an access. So there's an access point there. It also access, yeah. because it abuts town-owned property where there are already trails like the Blue Trail. Mm -hmm. um, it is on the open space plan. And what's the asking price? Uh, I don't know. I don't have any details other than it's something that might be coming up for sale. It's off oh, Dillon Road. Right. Yeah, it's right off Dillon. Yeah. And it's a, something for us to look at patch of land. I never realized that it was it, privately on that. It's a there. big 36 acre. You wouldn't even know it. I mean, the, the power lines make a big swath through it if you look at it right. on a map. Um, so if you bring up the town's GIS maps, you can get an idea of how it lands in terms of uh, neighboring. Mm -hmm. and you mail us a map of that? You're the map yeah. guy. I can do that. Yeah, that'd be great. I can do that. Because as soon as I heard it was coming up for sale, first thing I did was jump onto the town's website yeah, and say, yeah, what? The man. what is this? <laughs> uh, let's see, other things, survey for town farmers we talked about. Oh, and something I had noticed, but I haven't driven by it in the last few days, um, Country Club of Woodbridge, or previous Country Club, mowing. I know this has been something that's been talked about in the past, and... What I wanted to bring up is not the mowing of the whole property, because I know that's twice a year, once early and once late, so right. the birds and other nesting animals have a chance to do their thing. But I noticed that the path right along, um, I call it 234, but it's got other terms, Fountain Street or uh, the Derby Road, is that the other name for it? Anyway, Estonia Road, thank you. The walking trail in that area has not been mowed. Last year, it had been mowed about three feet on either side. Mm -hmm. And when I drove by uh, just last week, I noticed that it was three wow. feet tall, leaning into the walking path. I move you complain. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if nobody has heard anything about it, um, I will send a, a nudge over to no, town no, no, about yeah, it, no. just to right. see what's going on. And maybe they've opted to not mow that particular walking path because it is not a paved walking path and there was some erosion so maybe they felt it was unsafe so to make it less desirable for people to walk on they yeah. haven't mowed it but uh, I wanted to get a little more info about yeah, that yeah I haven't heard anything about it and with that I have no more items on the agenda. I'd like trying? to make a motion. Boy, that, was quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. I'll second. Yeah. All right. Everybody seconds. All in favor? Uh, Aye. I Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.